everyone, and a welcome to Down Memory Lane. What do you get when you take a game about a plumber jumping on turtles, grabbing coins, and you mix it up with an epic adventure filled to the brim with magic? A dark shooter full of aliens. Yep, it's pretty much what happened when the late Gunpei Yokoi thought of today's game, Metroid. Gunpei Yokoi was one of the most influential people at Nintendo, but we'll see his biography in a more fitting episode. Let's just say he spent most of his career in the hardware part of Nintendo, and that he was Shigeru Miyamoto's supervisor back when he was designing arcade games a few years earlier, so he can kind of be seen as his mentor. He did actually supervise most arcade style games that the NES had at launch. I'll stop there, but let's just say he's not done being important for now. So, Mr. Yokoi decided to produce an action game that would take the elements of exploration, open world, and character evolution from The Legend of Zelda, which came out six months earlier. With his team, he created the first game in the Metroid series, which came out on August 6, 1986, in Japan. In a far off future, space pirates attacked deep space research spaceships and stole the mysterious life form that was under study. This life form, the Metroid, can track the very life force of any living being. The Metroids are so powerful that they were able to annihilate all civilization on planet SR388. Furthermore, the space pirates intend on multiplying them at will with beta rays. The Galactic Federation sent the police to attack them, but to no avail. They then summoned the best space hunters to ask them to go on the space pirate's planet, the planet Zevis. The strongest bounty hunter, the mysterious Samus Aaron, has answered the call. But time is running out. Will he be able to kill the pirate's lieutenant, Craig and Ridley, as well as their leader, Mother Brain, destroy the Metroid, and bring peace back to the galaxy? So you're Samus, that weird naked thingy with a huge red head. Let's see what you've got. The best bounty hunter in the galaxy. So, first Zelda inspiration, you're really bad when you start. Then you find various items to upgrade yourself. First, by going left, not right like in most games, you'll find the Morph Ball that enables Samus to turn into a ball. Yeah, but you know, the first thing you want to do is upgrade your pea shooter, and for that you've got some options. You have the missiles that are quite powerful but limited in numbers, but don't worry, there's quite a lot to find. And most of all, there's the long beam that extends your range. But there is something you might have noticed. All the monsters are so small, and you can't crush or lower your weapon. Ever. So you will often have to jump over them, and you will even find some boots that make you jump higher. And these upgrades are all permanent, they will stay with Samus for the rest of the game. Even the screw attack that makes you a force of destruction with each jump stay with you forever. But how do you find all this stuff? Remember I told you they were inspired by the first Zelda, so you have to search absolutely everywhere for them. They can be anywhere, from up the blue caves of Brinstar down to Ridley's purple volcano. Cool thing is, planet Zebes is split in many sections you can explore in practically any order you want. No level numbers here. They all have their regional features, monsters and music, which give off a great atmosphere. Most monsters all have the same basic elements though. Just a small detail I want to throw out there is that in the manual, they refer to Kraid and Ridley as mini-bosses. It's actually the first time that the word boss is used to talk about a level guardian in any game. Now, let's get to Metroid's fun. If you want to play this game clean, with no guide or map whatsoever, I strongly advise you draw your own map, because you will get lost as this game doesn't give you anything. Even if you have a good sense of direction, this game is guilty of copy-pasting its levels a lot. For example, this North Air Chef is placed at 5 or 6 different places, and many times it's on top of itself with no difference whatsoever. Add to that corridors that are just as similar and you can see how confusing it might become. And like most Metroid games, you will do a lot of backtracking. Doors might also add to that by making you completely defenseless. Ah! How can you dodge that? 
Also, don't forget that Zelda inspiration I mentioned. Of course, now I'm talking about the very first Zelda. You know the one you had to blindly bomb walls and burn random trees to find secrets? Well, here it's absolutely the same thing, except it's often necessary to progress. Something that helps though, is that these secrets are also victim of the copy-pasting I mentioned earlier. So when you found one, you can find many more quite easily. One more annoying detail is that no matter how many energy tanks you get to upgrade your hit points, when you die, you always restart half dead with 30 hit points. And filling up might be long when monsters only give you 5 points for orbs. Although, they might be more generous later. And that brings me to the game over system of the game. When you die, the game gives you a password to resume where you left off. So, no save point here. You have to write down that long pile of characters if you want to resume your game. And don't make any mistake because you will know the pain of losing everything. The original Japanese version saved your game, but in America they kept battery backed saving cartridges for The Legend of Zelda, which came out around the same time in August 87. Now I'm about to spoil the ending, but seriously, if you already know at least a little bit about gaming, you already know the big spoilers. So. Let's get to it. So, you destroy the big fat drunkard card crate and really the mutant purple chicken in relatively hard fights you can manipulate easily. You then enter Torian, where you kill Metroids left and right with your absolutely necessary ice beam and missiles. You pump Mother Brain up with missiles, run away back to the surface for the big revelation that Samus Aran, greatest bounty hunter in the galaxy, is a woman. That revelation lost a lot of its greatness nowadays, but we're in the 80s here. Remember the place of women in all the games I talked about until now. I don't have to dodge everything DK throws at you to save the lady. She's been kidnapped by King Koopa, called Bowser by the North American team, and kidnaps Princess Zelda to have her Triforce of Wisdom. He also sent his demons to take away the king's daughter. Bowser kidnaps Princess Toadstool and Mario, or Luigi in this case, has to save her. That decision seems to have been made on a whim during development. But, Nintendo, you took a fearless bounty hunter alone on a dark, hostile planet and made her the first respectable female playable video game character. And for that, I respect you. That doesn't count! The passwords can also make some cheat codes, like infinite missiles or health, or there's the famous Justin Bailey code. It makes you play with a suitless Samus with all her upgrades, except for the Ice Beam. Who is Justin Bailey? Well, I found a hockey player and a Sony employee with that name, but other than that, no idea. So, the first Metroid can be a pain to play for those who don't know what's coming, but it's the first of an awesome series. It is a pioneer of what we could call the action exploration genre, and it will stay the only game of its kind for quite a while. Once you know where everything is, you can have great fun speedrunning the game, and you can also get many endings depending on how fast you finish it. The ending I've got is the average ending, for having finished the game between 3 and 5 hours. I do recommend Metroid for those of you who are already fans of the series and are curious to know how it all began. I told you earlier to draw your own map, but this game can be so disorienting that I do recommend using an online map for this game. If you are new to this series and you want to start with something similar, I'd recommend more Metroid Zero Mission for the Game Boy Advance, a reimagined version of the same story that I think has way too many enhancements to be considered a remake. It's much more accessible and it's actually one of the best in the series. The original can be found on NES, Game Boy Advance and downloaded on Nintendo's eShop. Zero Mission is on Game Boy Advance and can be downloaded on Wii U, in Europe only. It's not yet available in America, but I think it's only a matter of time before it is. So, Samus Aran is a pillar for female protagonists in gaming. If I ask you who is your favorite female protagonist in gaming, answer in the comments below after liking this video, and I'll see you next episode in which we'll see a game made by the same team who was long forgotten. See you then!